I've been reading more books from Native American authors talking about how they understand this land that we live on, which is not my mentality. Mm -hmm. I just read a great one called Braiding Sweetgrass. And just this idea of like how you, the earth wants us to care for her, you know, and that is part of growing your own food. And that is part of growing hemp. And that is part of growing cannabis is caring for the earth and she will care for us. I do not grow anything. I talk about this all the time. <laughs> my husband does all the gardening. But I did grow my own plants this year. I grew three little plants. One was a male, two were females. And I got that sense of mm -hmm. like taking, like having children, like I have children, but taking care of this plant and watching her grow and being so proud of her and her little buds, which are nothing. But just that connectedness, really, I know how powerful it is. And I'm not, if I can grow cannabis, anyone can. Mm -hmm. And I understand the power of being connected to the plant that way now, because that is what a lot of my guests kept telling me. You have to have a connection to her. You have to see how she grows and all that. So I did it this year. <laughs> good for you and and you're Thank absolutely you. <laughs> right and congratulations because that's what it takes because the next time now you know what you like okay now i have an idea of like what this even is and what I, what i even want because you get into like when you start you just like okay can i do it that's first yeah, of all <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah, yeah. Well, can, I, can i keep it alive and i did do half indoor half outdoor my neighbors could see my little plants outside of the side of my house and again I didn't even know how the bud grew. I mean, that's the truth of it. Like, you know, you got it. I got it in a bag. You know, I got it from the container. I didn't mm -hmm. know what it grew like. I didn't know it was pretty. I didn't even understand the terpenes and the just the colors on the top. And it's a beautiful plant. She's a beautiful plant. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 and once you get bit by that bug, like I, for some reason, I got bit by it a long time ago when I was a kid. Like I even had my mom. I There was the marijuana thing on a report, you know, a list of topics that you can cover on a report for my science class. And I'm like, oh, marijuana. See, see, it says it right there. And, and I'm going to grow some. And so I grew some in the closet and I told her it was for, for school. And she's just helping me. You know what I mean? But that that's like how long ago it goes back to like I just had this like thing with this this damn plant. Good. You have a connection. I, I don't know. I mean, I think people come out the way they come out. I've raised two humans. One just turned 21, one just turned 24. And, you know, it's a lot taking care of someone else or something else. And my children had their own, you know, my son's a musician. He came out and he wanted to be a musician at two. I did not crush the dream. And now he's a professional musician in Nashville. So, you know, this Sweet. idea that people come out the way they come out and uh, hopefully we can care for them. And again, as coming back to the mom story, I mean, I was not a cannabis consumer when they were younger. I probably would have been a much nicer mother. <laughs> I was also a family <laughs> law attorney. So I was sort of angry a lot of the days. I mean, this is not even a joke. It's just that's how I spent my day fighting for other people. And I could talk about going to the liquor store. Like I could literally yell across my office, I'm stopping at the packy on the way home. Anybody want anything? Uh -huh. And it would be totally tied. <laughs> but if I went out into the, you know, smoked a joint before I picked my kids up at daycare, I would have arrested me. Anyway, so this is like idea that I it was so abnormal, but I was allowed to drink, which isn't good to be around your kids when you're drinking. Mm -hmm. And that I could have consumed cannabis and been sort of that person who's very present, which is what I tell young moms now. I'm like, you're not going to forget them. You're going to think they're more interesting. <laughs> Dude, you know how often I watch my little five year old daughter just yeah. in like, just in like amazement, <laughs> like. Yeah. I, you're you're part of me like how, like this is just so trippy to watch you and like you interact with the world and like some of the things you're doing i know you're doing for the first time and i'm sitting here just like damn i created that and you're with her again yeah. all kids want i think all anyone wants is for you to be in their world for a while and when you're a really busy parent and you're trying to you know you're running off to daycare and you're running off to this and you're trying to make dinner and you're doing homework and you're not focusing on them because you're trying to get all the things done cannabis can help you and it's always that moment like i remember that moment of coming home that transition moment i just needed to calm down and it's such a hard thing to do to go from like being a professional in a certain mode to taking care of little kids and i know that cannabis can help you with that moment the transitional moment to bring you into your body and be focused and present for your family which is what we're talking about which is why i want to talk about crushing the shame because so many women have been hiding in the closet or in the garage and spraying themselves with perfume and hoping no one notices, which can't actually help with the whole process you really want to go through, which is calming yourself down and becoming present. So we talk a lot about like how you normalize it, how your kids see you doing whatever you're doing. And they're not, a, they're not as intrigued when you're being honest and open. If you're hiding, they're curious, but if they know it's mommy's medicine or if they know it's daddy's medicine, they will probably tell you because they can, they can, they're with you all the time. They know when you're getting anxious. 
and they can say, you might, you know, like we say to them, they could say to you, I think you need a break or maybe you need some medicine or it's not abnormal for them. And they don't want to try it. They don't want to eat it. They don't want to do stuff that adults are doing, Mm -hmm. but they can just be engaged with this world and see that it exists and it's normalized. And then when they get older and you have that teenage conversation, obviously it's a different conversation. And then like my kids during the pandemic were in college and we consumed together. That was like made the pandemic so much nicer. I've I've done that as well. I have a 22 year old, and the first time. So here here's the story. So the first time we met, right? Because I through my addiction and everything else, I lost my 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 thing to to parental rights. So I had to give them up, and so I made my way back around finally at some point, and we ended up meeting each other. And it was really really weird. And so I was just like, you know what? Let's just. It wasn't weird, but it was just like. It was just, it was just like awkward. So I was like, you know what? Let's go to the dispensary. We're in Vegas. Dude, there's tons of them here. I've, I haven't been in Vegas in a while. So we went to a dispensary. We rolled a joint. We smoked a joint on the way to her favorite restaurant. And then we just sat. That was it. That's what we needed. We just sat for an hour and a half in front of this restaurant, just passing the joint back and forth and just asking questions and answering questions. <laughs> that was literally the magic, I think, to life, asking questions feeling that you're someone hears you and that you're being heard. And I think that would be the, I mean, our, in the whole country, if we just start asking each other questions instead of yelling at each mm-hmm. other and, you know, sometimes we don't want to hear the answers, but if you ask somebody questions enough, they will like you more. I think that's the podcasting thing I've mm-hmm. learned and that they will think, you know, because if you feel like someone's interested in you, you like them and it's I kind of break down the barriers. So cannabis should help us talk to each other. It could help us ask each other more questions. And then maybe we wouldn't be so angry all the time. 